Good day, Bride of Christ. My name is Vilio, and I've had the privilege of being a part of Show for Stalin Vodge for the past seven years. Can you believe it? Time flies when you're having fun. And in this time, what a great opportunity we have to have online services and connect with one another on different platforms. Although we still want to say that we miss everyone dearly meeting together physically. It is so, so, so important to do so. Um, in this time, if you've just joined us, perhaps this is your first time streaming in with us, we want to extend a warm welcome to you. Um, we are really thankful that you have decided to join us on this day. There's a link in the description box. If you've got any ministry needs, prayer needs, we'd love to connect with you. Please fill that link in and we will get in touch with you. Now I'd like to ask Eva to share some announcements with us. Thank you. Thank you, Vilio. I'm so excited to see what God is doing in our hearts in this time, and I would love to share a few announcements with you. Firstly, we're hosting another live worship session this week, Wednesday at 8 p.m. It will be streamed on Facebook and on YouTube, so make a note and don't miss out. Secondly, every evening at 8 p.m., we have our daily encouragements. It will also be streamed on Facebook and on YouTube. We're finishing up with the Gospel of Matthew, and I'm so excited to announce that this Thursday, the 2nd of July, we will be starting with the Book of Acts. Thirdly, we are committed to seeing you spiritually grow, and that's why we have all these training schools going on. The Financial Wellness School is going at the moment, but we have two other training schools starting on the 6th of July, which will be the Apologetic School and the Our Father series. If you would like some more information or sign up for one of these schools, please follow the link in the description below to join the WhatsApp group. Lastly, we'd like to say thank you so, so much for all your contributions. It makes it possible for us to reach so many people in the communities around us and also keep the church and office going in this time. Enjoy the rest of the service. Hi church, it's Willem here saying hi all the way from Belleville CY. Clint, all the way from Wellington. Everyone, my name is Atengo Simpiti, coming to you from the Eastern Cape. Hello church, my name is Jürgens, I'm currently in Brackenfell. Hi church, this is Wimbai from Richards Bay KZN. Hi church, my name is Sean, I'm from Stellenbosch. This is Murray, in Tukhue KZN. Hi church, my name is Luke Langer, uh, I'm from Joburg, Bedford U. Hi church, Michaela from Durban here. Hi everybody, my name is Chris, I'm part of the Amplified Youth Group here at Stellenbosch. Hello church, it's Daniel Pasca here, greetings from the farm in Zimbabwe. So grateful for the response of the church during this time of lockdown of encouraging one another and caring for one another's needs. Hello everyone, my name is Kim Shaw. I want to say we miss you guys so much and we're praying for you. Missing you guys a lot. Um, I just want to say study hard, stay in community. Church uh, is how as small groups we've been able to continue to gather. just want to say we're excited to see how God is waking us up to worship Him in spirit and truth. One thing that I'm thankful for about church is friendship and community to me is friendship. One thing I am grateful for the church is that they support us during this time when they are just like a family to us. This is my fifth time trying to make this video. <laughs> my English is not good. But yeah, I'm very thankful for the fact that we have community um, in church, we have a family. Um, and uh, one word that I would use to describe church is choir. Because of the choir, I get this picture of many voices, but they make one sound. Um, and I think it's, it's a similar thing with the church. Community is love. We miss you. We miss you. Can't wait to see you. Cheers. Um, and remember, we are the church. So remember that we are the church, we don't only go to church, so be the church. Remember, we are the church. I really hope to see you guys soon, we love you. Yeah, I'm really excited to see everyone soon, hopefully. Bye!
There is no greater glory, no more beautiful thing, no more majestic appearance, no commanding a king, no one we love. You are the one we love. And where the spinning heavenlies where they're crafting our hearts your word is potent in power you will perform all you ask you are the one we love Jesus you are you are the one we love and there's no greater love
perfect, spotless righteousness, the great unchangeable I am, the King of glory and of grace, the King of glory and of grace, the King of glory. Father, thank you that we are welcome in your presence because of what Jesus has done. Thank you that you invite us to draw close, to draw near. That you see us washed clean in the blood of Jesus. No greater love than this. No greater love. We celebrate, we remember your sacrifice, Jesus. We come boasting in nothing of ourselves, only what you have done. What a privilege to be able to worship together even when we cannot be together. Let's just close our eyes and in prayer. Father, we thank you that even though we cannot be together, we can still worship you together, Lord. Thank you, God, that you are good and that you are trustworthy. And Lord, this morning we want to say that we give you all the glory and all the honor and God, we owe our lives to you. And um, we thank you, God, that you never leave us, Lord. You are always with us. And even as we are going to speak about your word now, Lord, will you speak to us and will you work in us and through us, Lord? Let your name be glorified, Lord, and let your kingdom come. And let your will be done in our lives. In the name of Jesus. Amen. Good morning. It is once again such a privilege to be able to share with you from the word of God. And once again, it would be better if I could see your faces. <laughs> um, but we are grateful that there is a way of still sharing with each other and encouraging each other. <coughs> So I have something that I want to share this morning from the Word of God. Um, and I always say this, but the Word of God really is uh, alive. <laughs> and we cannot really encourage each other with our own thoughts as much as we can be encouraged by the Word. Um, we know that the Word will stand forever, even when everything else falls away. And my prayer this morning is that we will really, uh, by faith, um, take this word that, that, that we receive from God and apply it in our lives. Because it always proves to work well <laughs> when we apply the word of God in our lives. So I would like to um, start with the scripture. Um, I would like to read from Psalm 27 verse 14. And it says, wait for and confidently expect the Lord. Be strong and let your heart take courage. Yes, wait for and confidently expect the Lord. So this is just, many, this is just one of many scriptures um, that tells us to wait on God or to wait for God. And, um, you know, being, being, I have been a part of, of the Church of Jesus Christ for many years. And I know that we often quote this and we often say, just wait on God or let's wait on God. And, I, and, and, and for many years, I thought, what on earth? 
does that mean? How do we do that? <laughs> and I'm sure that, that, that many people who are listening to this message right now are, are thinking, yes, it's, it's, it's all good and fine, wait on God, but how do we actually do that? And the reason why I am sharing this is because I believe that many of us find ourselves in difficult circumstances currently due to all the recent things that happened around COVID-19 and all the implications and, and it's different for all of us. But I um, really believe that God has a word for us in this difficult season. And I believe that this concept of having to wait for God or wait on God is very real now to many of us since we find ourselves in difficult circumstances. Um, and this is what I want to speak about this morning. Um, so let me read another scripture um, and then, then we'll get back to this. I want to read from Proverbs 16 verse 9 that says, A man's mind plans his way as he journeys through life. But the Lord directs his steps and establishes them. I love the scripture. <laughs> I find great comfort in the scripture. Because this scripture says that a man plans his way. And for all of us, we are human. Human beings have to plan. <laughs> uh, we have to plan for our lives. We have to plan our next day. Um, there is no way that we can live a meaningful or, or purpose-driven life if we do not plan. But I think many times as born-again Christians, and even, even those of us who might not be born-again Christians, we fear that our planning is wrong, we fear that our planning will not work, uh, we fear that we will make mistakes or that we will choose uh, the wrong way. And the comfort that I want to bring this morning is that the Word of God says it is fine to plan. <laughs> we have to plan. People plan. But God will direct our steps. So this is called living by faith. This is when we plan our way but we ask God for guidance when we plan and then we have the faith that God will lead us as we walk through these plans, as we live it out. Now let's get back to the scripture that says, wait for and confidently accept the, expect the Lord. Be strong. Let your heart take courage. In other words, do not fear. Yes, wait for and confidently expect the Lord. So the word of God teaches us that we should have confidence. We should not fear and we should wait for God to execute his plans. Now, when I read this, I was really struck by something. The word of God does not say, wait for the thing that you are trusting God for. Can you see the difference? <laughs> uh, I know the word of God is not always specific, but if we can allow ourselves to pretend that it was, it does not say, wait for the job that you believe you are going to get, or wait for the income that you need or wait for the relationship to be healed or wait for your physical body to be healed or whatever the challenge might be. It does not say to wait for the solution of your problem, of your problems. It says wait for the Lord and there is a difference. So my encouragement this morning is that God is calling us to journey with him and to do so by faith. In other words, this is what we do. This is practically <laughs> what I believe 
the Word of God teaches us to do. We make our plans and then we wait for God expectantly and confidently to work in us and through us. In other words, God will not always solve our problems. Am I allowed to say that? <laughs> he might um, bring a whole different challenge. Or he, let me rephrase, he might allow while we wait for one problem to be solved or one difficulty to be overcome, he might allow an entire new difficulty to come our way. Uh, something that we trust him for might not come through in the way that we believe it should. If I can remind you of the Jews in the time when they were waiting for the Messiah to come and... Um, if, if you go to the to the, the, the prophecies in the Old Testament and, and the Jews were holding on to those prophecies and and, and then we, we move on to the New Testament and the Jews uh, were absolutely convinced that Jesus is coming to relieve them from Roman oppression and the Roman oppression, as many of us will know, was severe. They were truly suffering and they had no doubt that the Messiah will come and will relieve them from Roman oppression. And that was what they were waiting for, confidently and expectantly. But they were wrong. <laughs> because the Messiah came, Jesus, and he did not come um, as, a Rome, as a soldier and, and a king who can lead an army against the Romans. He came in, in, in humility. <laughs> he came in difficult circumstances. He, he had to, they, his parents had to flee with him because his life was in danger. Nothing was the way they expected it to be. We should learn from that. <laughs> we should learn and understand that the purposes that God has in our lives as individuals, as families, as the Church of Jesus Christ is often not what we expect or what we plan. So whatever your and my circumstances are right now, my encouragement today is wait expectantly, confidently, on the Lord to do in us and through us exactly what he purposes to do. I want to read another scripture from Ecclesiastes and, and I, have to, I have to acknowledge <laughs> before I read that that um, Ecclesiastes might not be um, your favorite book in the Bible. It is quite cynical. <laughs> and we have to read it in context. But there's also a lot of truth um, in, in, in the book of Ecclesiastes. And I, and, and I want to read from, from um, chapter 9, verse 11 to 12. Um, and Solomon speaks here. And, and, and listen carefully. He says, I again saw under the sun that the race is not to the swift, and the battle is not to the strong, and neither is bread to the wise, nor riches to those of intelligence, and understanding nor favor to men of ability. But time and chance overtake them all. For man also does not know his time of death, like fish caught in a treacherous net, and birds caught in the snare, so the sons of men are ensnared in an evil time when a dark cloud suddenly falls on them. Why am I reading the scripture? It's not one that we would probably uh, read eagerly. Because what the word of God says here, basically, if I can just make it very understandable to all of us, it says one plus one is not two. <laughs> just because... Uh, you are um, intelligent, it does not mean, or very skilled, it does not mean that you will uh, acquire riches. Um, just because you do this does not mean that you will have that result, because life is unfair, but God is not. And God is love. 
And my, my encouragement this morning, just shortly, <laughs> is that God is um, really after our hearts. And we should wait for him and we should wait on him and we should wait confidently that he will do whatever he purposes to do in and through us. And usually when God changes us to become more like Jesus, it is in difficult circumstances. So yes, we plan, we have to plan, but then we wait on God to have his way. And if that means that you and I are in a season perhaps now where we cannot give but we have to receive, then do so humbly. <laughs> let's humble ourselves. If it means that this is a time where we can give, let's give. Many people are in need right now. If it means that we have to wait for something that we cannot envision and we are anxious, let's go to God and say, God, have your way in my life. Change me. Reveal yourself to me. Let me know your love. And that is exactly what he will do. He is always with us. He is always with us. He will never leave us. He walks with us. I want to ask you to allow me to pray with you. And then I would also like to do a prayer for those of us who might not have a relationship with the Lord Jesus Christ. I remember how my life changed when I um, completely surrendered to him. Everything changed for me. And I believe that there are people watching this, listening to this, and you have not surrendered your life. Or maybe you have, but you are still holding back. And God says, give me everything. Trust me with all of your heart. The word of God says, trust in the Lord with all of your heart. Lean not on your own understanding. So this is an opportunity to say, God, I want to trust you with all of my heart. I know you are trustworthy. <laughs> you are to be trusted, God. You are faithful. So let's close our eyes and, and let's, let's end in prayer. Father God, we, we want to thank you, God, that even though you don't make life easy for us, Lord, you use every single situation to reveal yourself to us if we choose to find you, Lord. God, if we choose to draw near to you, Lord. God, I want to pray for every person who is watching this, Father. Every person who is engaging now with you, Father. Wherever they are sitting or standing or lying in their beds, Father. Wherever they are, Father, I pray in the name of Jesus, Lord. That instead of hardening our hearts, instead of questioning your ways, Father, in, instead of turning our backs on you because life is hard and life is difficult, to turn our faces to you and to ask you, Lord, reveal yourself to us. Reveal your purposes to us, Lord. Do in us and through us whatever you have purposed for us, every single one of us, Lord, Lord, we wait on you expectantly and confidently. And even though we have to plan, Lord, we wait for you to direct our steps. And Father, I want to pray for those who do not know you, Lord. Lord, I pray that you will reveal to them, Lord, that everything will change for them. Once they have intimacy with you, Father, I pray that you will that you will just um, overwhelm them with your love and with your goodness, Lord. Father, and we know that you want to bless us, Lord. And, and what I want to pray this morning is that you will bless us, especially bless us with peace, Father. And the assurance of our faith during difficult times. Lord, we worship you. God, and we want to say once again... All our hope is in you. You are our God. You are our provider. 
you are our healer lord you are our rock that we stand on and and and, and we are safe with you god and we worship you lord and we thank you and we pray this in the name of jesus amen amen thank you